on and on and on. And even Alzheimer's disease, as we spoke earlier, is an inflammatory disorder. And so we, we can change that. All right, we have whole foods that can actually neutralize inflammation. And um, as I mentioned earlier, um, I'm going to be creating a, a manual on uh, this and explaining this. Uh, and if people want to, they can, they can get that manual. Yeah, I, I want to see that manual. I think that would be very beneficial for people, Marvin. Um, with, and, and you're going to address just about everything we've been talking tonight uh, in depth? Yes, I, it's going to be a special report on oxidative stress and inflammation. And I'm going to address what they do not want you to know. I'm going to go into, the, say, the dermatologist and skin cancer. I'm going to go into inflammation and bowel disease. I'm going to go into inflammation and diabetes. And I'm going to, this book will be available in the next four days, and I, I can give you an 800 number where they can call, and we could send that book to them. May I do that? Yeah, please. Uh, anyone listening in can call 800-831-7633. 800-831-7633 and ask for the special report on oxidative stress and inflammation. Very good. And you say foods, natural foods will help reduce this? Absolutely, without hesitation. And we have experimental data that will be shown in the book. We're not going to say things that we don't. I mean, a lot of uh, one of the problems in the nutritional world is that many people are selling products and they're ruining it for the people with science. I mean, they go out and they put this product on the market and they do a Madison Avenue type advertising and everybody says, oh, this is really going to work. But they don't show you any data. I mean, whether they take the Guarana fruit from Brazil or, or the mangosteen fruit, ask always for the data. Ask, are they extracting it? Are they synthesizing it? Look for chemical clinical data. And um, I think you'll learn a lot. And uh, I believe that clinical data with Whole Foods is going to bring reality back to, to the use of Whole Foods. What do you think of apple cider vinegar, uh, a teaspoon a day? Ta- or it, has, it has antioxidants. There's no question about it. And what you're saying, apple cider vinegar, that you're not creating a synthetic there. You're, you're, no, you're actually keeping natural. the nutrients together there. Yeah, it is. Uh, it, it's natural. Um, you know, there's a little lady used to uh, take it every day. I think she's still a little old lady. <laughs> it's going on. Well, you know, in certain parts of the world, George, people are living a long time, and we have to see what is in their diet that that's helping them. And, and, and you are what you eat. There's no nothing against that can defy that. You are exactly what you eat. Have you been following that story of that uh, yogi in uh, in uh, India? He's He's, they've got him locked up now. They're watching him. But he claims that he hasn't eaten or, or had anything to drink in 70 years. I, 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 I can't believe, believe it. George. They I must have it. an IV going. <laughs> it's, I mean, it's bizarre. He's gone uh, under watch, according to these doctors, two or three weeks now. That's since they've been testing him based on uh, what he has told them. And he hasn't eaten or, or hasn't had anything to drink. And he's still functioning fine. Doesn't go to the bathroom. But the, well, you he, know, people can put themselves in a trance. You know that, and you yeah. can blow. I mean, how does animals go to sleep all winter and they they hibernate? And uh, there are some people who maybe right. can control with their mind can control their bodily functions, and perhaps he's in a trance and is hibernating. So it's definitely possible. Anything in life is possible, including living to be 120 years of age. You uh, give us your website verbally. Go ahead. Uh, our website is uh, there are two. One is NuFlex Online, N U F L E X Online, O N L I N E dot com, NuFlex Online dot com. And the other website is Mushroom Solutions dot com. So both will have information on what I'm talking about with data. I mean, we're going to talk about how you can improve your nutritional status and avoid the problems of life. It's easy, isn't it? Yes, it is. All you have to do, well, we did a study, and this is, I mean, we, you know, that 68% of all women who have gum disease have premature labor. That's a staggering number when you think That's about bizarre. it. So everybody who's listening in should floss, brush their teeth better. But we wanted to see what is the relationship between anti-inflammatories and, and these problems. And so we did a study at UC Davis in horses. And we also did it in in humans in a general uh, clinical study, and we found that certain foods could actually improve gum disease. And and the results were staggering to us. 
Oh, I, I, I remember days. every time I'd go to my dentist uh, and, he, and he knew he was going to do the normal cleaning. He always wanted you to take, he doesn't do this anymore, but he always wanted you to take an antibiotic before the event. How come? Because you have, you have bacteria uh, in, in your teeth, in your gums. And so when you manipulate, mechanically manipulate teeth, drill them or, or push them around, you're releasing the bacteria into your bloodstream. They're going and that may be place. why women have premature labor. When they have bad gum disease, they're, they're actually creating a hormonal environment that triggers the uh, maybe oxytocin, which causes contraction of the uterus and leads to premature labor. I want to talk about that horse, uh, Barbaro, when we come back. Fascinating story. We'll be back. In 2006, the Kentucky Derby winner was an incredible horse by the name of Barbaro, but he shattered his leg, and then he eventually died. He fought back. Uh, You've looked at this situation, Marvin. Yes, uh, it was a tragedy. Um, uh, He was uh, considered to be a triple crown uh, uh, potential. Uh, He won the Kentucky Derby by six and a half lengths, and then he went on to the Preakness, and on May 20th, he fractured uh, his right hind leg. Uh, and then they operated on him. And what happened is when, when you mechanically put pressure on, a, on the leg of a, a horse, he's, he, so when he shifted his weight to his left side, the added strain brought on laminitis. So the biggest challenge um, in fracture repair is preserving the good leg. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they did good surgery, but he died of laminitis, which occurred on the other leg. Um, and I personally think he, he could have been protected from laminitis by nutritional, uh, uh, by a, a better nutritional program. And it's hard, you know. The retrospectoscope is twenty twenty, and it's very easy for me to to make comments. I mean, he had great doctors, um, but I, I just feel that we've made some progress now in laminitis, uh, and it's very similar to what happens in humans to the foot. Uh, the lamina is um, um, uh, tissues that connect the horse's foot bone to the horny material of its hoof. And it's similar to what we have in our feet. And, uh, and the inflammation causes excruciating pain and pressure. Um, and in most serious cases, causes the hoof to separate from the bone. And we now know that laminitis is related to insulin resistance, similar to diabetes. So horses do get insulin resistance. And so if we could take mushrooms like agaricus blazii, we potentially could have stopped the laminitis by increasing insulin sensitivity. And now since that time, there are many, many articles out uh, on uh, laminitis and and insulin resistance. Uh, In fact, the same year uh, that I went, in fact, I went to New Bolton to talk about Barbaro, but they had euthanized him the day before. And one of the reasons is that we had uh, uh, been studying racehorses and we found that we could increase uh, hemoglobin and red cells in racehorses with nutrition. So we had good evidence that nutrition could could have improved the situation with Barbaro. And it's legal, you know? That's, oh, that's the important thing. Oh, yeah. You can't. I mean, mushrooms are a food. It's like telling a horse not to eat a carrot. Exactly. I mean, yeah. seriously. I mean, sometimes the government goes a little too far in regulating foods. You know, they, they do. Now, this, this mushroom that you just mentioned, the uh, Agurius sublesii, Yes. Um, how much does it drop one's glucose levels? Well, glucose is not a good measurement because glucose migrates all over the place. Measuring blood sugar will vary totally in different directions all day long, depending on what you're eating. Uh, there are better tests. There's ones that you measure over 30 or 60 or 90 days. So you can measure it on day zero, measure it two weeks later, 30 days later, and, and it gives you a better read. And the, those are called hemoglobin A1C and a glycomark assay. Um, uh, but those, those are much better tests. But the basic one, which people measure blood sugar, uh, we find that uh, uh, in general, if you take approximately uh, 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 one gram uh, to two grams of, uh, of a mushroom powder combination in a capsule that we could lower uh, blood sugar uh, by 10 to 20 percent. That's huge. That's yes, good. It is. But it, it comes, you see it more on, on, your, uh, on your hemoglobin A1C and your glycomark assay. But it's not everybody. I mean, you'll see it in some people. But in general, what you do see is that people who have diabetes are tired. At 4 o'clock in the afternoon, they've lost their energy. And one of the reasons is they can't metabolize sugar like, like we do, who don't have diabetes. 
And so they get really uh, down and out around 4 o'clock. And even if you don't control their blood sugar, most of the people on, in a study uh, say that they have increased energy at 4 p.m. And the reason they have increased energy is that you have better use of the insulin that you have and you're metabolizing the blood sugar better. So you know there are factories inside the cell, and if you burn your blood sugar, you're going to have more energy. The uh, the diabetes uh, epidemic, as, as you've called it, and uh, we are into that right now, how would you put that on the list of di- uh, trouble spots for people right now? Way up on the list? Way up there. I think, I think we're controlling, uh, uh, people may disagree with me, but I think when we look on a epidemiologic basis, I think we're controlling uh, cancer and heart disease better than we're controlling diabetes. And I think that's why we need, that's why the government has announced a war on diabetes or, or metabolic syndrome. And they're saying even in school children, we got to stop use of the artificial sweeteners, the sugars, the high fructose sugars and Cokes, uh, diet Cokes. And I don't mean to pick on Coca-Cola, or even 7-Up. Uh, because it's leading to diabetes. And, and uh, you know, one out of every four Americans will have or has diabetes. That's staggering. Well, it sure is. Now, you know, what about these hallucinogenic mushrooms? Are they any good for you? Yes, they are. I mean, despite what everybody's been telling us, hallucinogenic oh, really? mushrooms are being used in depression now and, and uh, obsessive, there's uh, obsessive compulsive disorders um, which cause depression. And, and we're finding out that, that they have value there. Okay, let's go. Give us, if you could, an overview of a program that you would recommend to people. And of course, your phone number for the manual is 800 831 7633. But give us an overview. What I would recommend is, is you, you, you have to look at what foods uh, will make other foods bioavailable. And I think you have to use whole foods. And, there, and, and when I, in about I will be able to show you proof that I'm correct in about six weeks, and I will show you hardcore evidence using whole foods that can stop disease. And I'm going on record to say that we will have that in six to eight weeks, because I know some of the preliminary data, but I'm not at liberty to announce it tonight because we want to to really have the data totally finished in the experiment. But I would recommend, for example, if you uh, were to take uh, the mushroom powder that we produced is one – uh, called Immusano, there's one called Glucosano. We now have an anti-arthritis one called Nuflex, N-U-F-L-E-X, and it's at nuflexonline.com. You will find that those are composed of whole biologic components. We, we don't do anything to a mushroom except take the water out. Mushrooms are 90% water. It's the only biologic food that allows total removal of water without destroying any of the components. You end up with the the same thing you started with, but without water. And we put those into rare combinations. You take those mushrooms and you add other components that you need, like coenzyme Q10. It's very good for heart muscle. Uh, Omega-3, as you probably have talked about before, comes from, you know, fish, from salmon and other fish and and, and, and is very healthy. Well, these are products that are extracted from the fish, coenzyme Q10 is extracted or synthesized, but there's no transport system with it unless you eat the fish, what I talked about before. Well, the mushroom you're taking, because it lends itself to removing the water, is a whole biologic. So you take these other nutrients with the mushroom powder, and the mushroom powder with its enzyme structure is going to make the other nutrients bioavailable. If you want to take vitamin D complex and say you have a vitamin B, your levels are low, you should take vitamin D with mushroom powder because then the mushroom powder has transport molecules that will make the vitamin D more bioavailable. And, and it goes on and on and on. But it's the unusual combination and it's a synergy between all of these foods and the, and the components in nature that will make them more useful in terms of your longevity.